Hey friends, welcome back to another origami design vlog. And today we have something super exciting to fold. Bethesda Game Studios, not sponsored, just released a new sci-fi RPG that allows you to traverse the universe. And to traverse the universe, you need some good equipment. In the game, thankfully there are tons of really cool weapons and armors that I took inspiration from to design something from origami. Now, there's just one really big problem. I've never designed anything sci-fi before, so this was an incredible challenge. But let me tell you how I worked it out. The first hurdle I have to surpass is what am I actually designing? There are so many cool characters and weapons and armor in Starfield that it's really hard to choose. Well, for this design, I think I should just design myself. And I've picked up these really cool armors from some adventuring and a pretty neat weapon as well. So between these two spacesuits, I really like the silhouette of the Bounty Hunter spacesuit, but the helmet design of the Pirate Assault suit. And I think I can manage combining these two as the colors will be unified in our origami fold. And in origami design, it's important for me to decide what details I want to keep and which ones I'm not going to do. So it's going to contain the main features, but not all the tiny little details. Some of these features include the visor from the space helmet, the overall silhouette of the space suit, and the angular shape of the boost pack. And I can't forget about his weapon. So his weapon actually has two laser barrels, but I just kind of like the overall silhouette and it'll be a lot simpler to design if I keep it that way. I was actually debating whether to include or not include this, but I think we can do it. So let's start to design. And again, I have the problem that I don't exactly know what I'm designing, but I can go off the fact that we're designing a human so we can use the similar structure that I've used before. I'm going to start off by drawing a tree and this is a general proportions of say eight unit legs with one unit feet and then um, some length of torso. I'm actually going to be doing a four unit torso. Normally I would do a two or three units, but I'm going to be doing a non axial structure here. And this four units will actually shrink down into two units once I fold it. So we're just leaving space for that by having four units for the torso. Let's have six unit arms, uh, that, and then I'm also going to be leaving space for the head as I think we're going to be able to, or we're going to need some extra space for the helmet and some details there. So it's a bit more stretched out than we would normally have it as well. But from this, we can start adding some details. So the first detail we should add is the weapon. And this is because it's going to take a large portion of the paper. So it's good to plan for that at the beginning. And what I'm going to be doing is referencing the silhouette we saw in the actual game and kind of doing something similar. So I'm starting with just a base tree for our weapon. And then I think it'd look cool with a foregrip. And then we're going to need some space for the magazine. Um, or I guess in this case, it's a battery pack for the laser. And we have kind of the handguard, the stock. And I want to try to make a sight or an iron sight for the weapon. I'm not sure how this is exactly going to play out because we're not going to have too much depth, but I'll at least leave some space for that. So we can add a few details here and maybe one more on this side to give room. And with that tree complete, we can just connect it to the hand. Now, obviously it's going to take some extra paper to actually connect this, but we'll pack that in later. So now that that's in place, we can start on the other main features. One of those I mentioned was the boost pack. And I'm not too sure what I want for that yet, but we can use a three unit flap right around the shoulders, which should give us enough space to shape that out. Another one is the helmet. And I have an idea of making the visor with just two one unit flaps. And then we have the additional flap for the back of the helmet and maybe one for the face or chin area. So at least these four flaps will give us some space to start shaping. 
and I think we can add some more details elsewhere. Now, one other thing I mentioned was the silhouette of the spacesuit, and it's pretty wide, I would say. And even though we have a tree representation of our figure, we can kind of plan for adding width to our arms and legs. And that is done in the form of adding the proper amount of flaps to the same kind of joint areas. So I think I want, you know, a fair amount of flaps just starting from both the shoulders and around the hips. And that's going to, uh, to allow us to transition outwards into the legs and arms. Now, the final detail I'm going to add is fingers. And that's because I find I can be very expressive when shaping them. And it's not that big of an additional detail. Now, on the other hand, literally, I'm not going to add fingers. The way the structure is with the weapon actually should naturally allow me to add fingers, but I think it will add a necessary thickness and we won't really be seeing the fingers anyways. So for now, I'm not going to include them on the other hand. The next step is to start drawing the crease pattern. And obviously this tree is not going to fit in this grid. There are ways to calculate how much grid I technically need for this tree, but I kind of just like to wing it and eyeball it myself. And the way I do that is I just remove these boundaries for myself so I can just draw as I please. And we can start with the leg because that is probably just going to be in the corner. So just following our tree, we have two, four, six, eights, and I'm going to leave nine for our foot right here. This is probably subject to change, but essentially what I'm doing is packing in that flap for this leg. Now, these lines are a little small, so let's just make them a little bigger for you to see, and we can keep going. And to continue, we have this two unit flap that is going to be our transition to make our leg wider. And so I'm actually going to add that, and I'm also going to plan one extra unit here before I add that two unit flap, just because I know the legs are gonna consume a little bit extra space, and we might need it. So. Let's plan that in. We've got a two unit flap here, which is going to transition for our legs to be wider. And so this is all we really need for that first half. Obviously I can reflect this to the other side so you can get you know, an idea of what the spacing will be like. And down in this area, we can actually add you know, whatever you want to add more details, but we can decide all that later. The more important part is just to get the packing of our tree down. So next we have this four unit river that makes up the body. So what I can just do is count up four units and plan for this space to be empty. Now we can start our other flaps. So let's ignore the flap for the boost pack for now and just worry about the arms. So two, four, six in length, including where the hands will be. So two, four, six, something like that. And very easily we can just have our fingers like this. So that'd be one, two, three, four, five fingers. And maybe we get lucky and this is in the corner. Uh, maybe we don't, but I do want them on the edge so we can shift it over to where the edge would be. And we can draw a new edge just like this. And so far this is following what we want. And now that we've done the arm, the next thing to plan for is the neck. And so I drew three units here and then our flaps for the head. And that would look something like this. And then four one unit flaps like this. Nope, oh, that's too many. And I don't really know what this is gonna be used for yet. So I can just leave them hanging. And if I draw our packing, you can see we have our neck that takes up this amount of space. And then we have four one unit flaps for the head details and helmets, something like that. Now that we have this, we can actually take a look at what we did above it. So I can complete this box and anything that comes out from over here actually lines up with our shoulder. And that gets me the idea of adding the boost pack here. And if I do a flap like that, that would actually represent this three unit flap 
sticking out at the bottom, even though it is above the head. Now, this is actually a little bit short. I kind of want to use a longer flap just to give myself some extra space to shape the backpack 3D, or not the backpack, the boost pack 3D. And I can very simply just pull our face and neck and boost pack flaps wider because this doesn't change the lengths of our neck and face flaps. They are still you know, three units and then the one unit face flaps. But I can now elongate the boost pack flap like this. And so now it is four units long without changing the others. Another thing to notice is that our face flaps, they're one units each, but they do consume space within our neck. So our neck is actually just two units long, uh, but I think that's plenty. We can redraw our tree later or I guess it more so looks like this now, like that. And so from here, I can just try to add some more flaps to encompass the tree we drew. But in reality, I don't exactly know how this is gonna turn out. So it's a great time to do a test fold. You know, this is approximately what our tree is looking like, not super exact, but Let's see after test folding how this changes. So here we have our test fold and it's just a 16 grid and kind of what we had in the crease pattern, but I changed the layout a bit of what flaps we have. And that gives us spacing between like the foregrip, the magazine, um, the normal grip over here and the stock as well as, you know, maybe this is a site or something. Uh, we at least have enough flaps. And the only real problem is the hand connection. There's not a lot for this, but you know maybe we can pleat it and it'll look like a hand. And after seeing our test fold, our crease pattern will now look something more like this. So we have a three unit flap over here, followed by a shorter one, and that gives us some space. So it's actually like this and it continues upwards into our you know one unit flap on top and then goes towards the edge into two unit flaps instead of one unit flaps like our tree um, so it's something more along the lines of this we also had extra space from this three unit flap to do some more details um, and i can't just stick the flap right here because we realized this is on a valley so there's actually going to be like a squash fold later on here and this will transition us correctly into this flap but for now we can just draw it kind of like that and be okay with it and then to match up the edge something like that and now that we've drawn the weapon uh pretty much all the way we can actually just check our proportions really quick because we used more space for, I guess this is the stock, um, our arm is now too short. We can take a look, it is you know about three units long. Um, we might be able to get plus one or so because of the swivel, but I'm going to want to make it a little bit longer. So let me grab, oops, everything here like this. And let's say uh, like, that about more something like this and with the general proportions done and the main features uh, besides the other leg we can actually get a good sense of how big our grid needs to be so obviously this is going to be a corner it kind of shoots this way and we can match it over here we do have some extra space going on along the top so i can just kind of fill that in with whatever it doesn't matter too much um, same thing here. I don't exactly know what is going to be happening with this, but um, yeah, you know. And now let's actually count our grid to see how big it is. And one nice thing I like to do is just, you know, make it shorter so we can go two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18. And then since we divide by two, we just have to do 18 times two, which is 36. 
Um, and that's a nice even number. So our grid is 36 by 36. Ideally, we won't need to add extra space for the you know second leg. We kind of know what that looks like. So I am comfortable with closing off our grid as such. And we can just copy the leg to the other side, if I can find a middle, and fill the rest of the design in from here. And now all we got left is to fill in the space here. And I'm kind of just thinking of adding, you know, some flaps just to make it symmetrical. This is about as basic as it gets. And with this packing, you might see a problem. You might be asking, boys, the head is misaligned with where the legs line up in the middle. It's asymmetrical. You know, how does that work? Because if you folded some of my other designs, you might know that there's normally a two unit axis that runs from between the legs and connects to the rest of the body. Uh, if we were to represent that on a crease pattern, it'd be something like this, and it's misaligned right here. Um, that's totally fine. We just need to add a structure to realign them. Now, I mentioned before that we have a four unit body, which is way longer than we normally need. Normally I go for a two or three unit body and we're not actually having an axis, but I'm still going to add a structure so that we can act like we have an axis. It's just gonna make it a little bit easier to shape. This is easily done if you just have a pleat. And what I don't wanna do is run that pleat through the whole model you know, this wouldn't make much sense at all. It's kind of wasting space. But what I can do is use our existing structures and do something like this. And that actually adds a pleat. So our mountain would be here and our valley can be right on top. And this is enough space to add that transition. Um, these aren't the exact mountain valleys, but it would look something like uh, this. So we have this little weird looking diamonds that will run through our model and they're aligned over here. And that way it creates these shapes where our axes will travel between here across those diamonds and up. And so this realigns our axes if we were using it. Um, but again, it's just going to be nice. So something like this. Now, this is enough grease pattern for me to start folding and doing a full test fold. But uh, let me just draw out the rest of the mountain valleys so that you kind of have a good idea of what's going on, as well as me being able to flat fold the transitions for the legs. And I can actually just test that out once it's flat foldable. You'll see really soon. And here we have our crease pattern. You can see we're not getting any more errors and we can actually hit the fold button and we get our fold. So a little bit rotated, but let's see both sides. Uh, obviously right now the arms are just folded down and nothing's really shaped, but we can see the transitions with the legs being wide and pretty much every structure looks good. So I think we're ready to start a test fold. And here we have our test fold. So this is the crease pattern we just saw, except for one big change. See if you can notice it. Well, at least our color changes are matching like what we have in our crease pattern. You can see that I think the legs are too long, which gives us room to just add pleats to add details for the knees. Um, so I think that's totally fine. And we have this big flap, which can turn into the torso um, for that armor and everything from the shoulders to the hands to even color changing this extra bit is working according to plan. You can see what I mean by we're not doing an axial uh, torso, at least underneath the armor, it's gonna be a spine and that kind of gives us the right proportions. Um, for the face, I just did a couple squash folds and valley folds to make the visor. And I didn't fold this completely out, but I think it's gonna work when we shape it. So that's kind of good enough for a test fold. 
The flap on top of the head is good for our boost pack, kind of what we planned for. And I was able to make it 3D, but it's kind of just plain. But again, we'll worry about that when we shape the final fold. And again, the last thing to note is that big change, which is the color change weapon. So I didn't really plan for this in the design because I thought it would be too complicated, but color changing it actually helps solve our problem of the weird hand scenario. So instead of having like a weird hand pleat, we just have a swivel or even kind of just a valley fold that will align all our flaps. Um, so I think this will work out nicely and it's going to make the weapon, you know, stand out a lot more, which is pretty cool. Uh, I think it's going to work out. The color change is simply reverse or outside reverse folding the entire flap. So it's also not too hard to fold and doesn't consume that much paper. Let's talk about the paper I'm going to use. I'm using a combination of extra fine hemp paper and tissue paper. Despite that sounding fancy, this combination gave me the most trouble I've had in a while. Here's why. Hemp fibers are strong, but when I applied the methyl cellulose, they almost disintegrated. This made a cool texture, but the side effect was that the paper got way too stuck on the cutting mat. Honestly, I almost gave up, but after thinking about how much the paper costs, I tried to save it. I re-wet the paper so it could come off of the mat, but the damage was already done. You can notice a nasty hole in the corner and all of those wrinkles. I was able to patch it up with some extra tissue, but you can still see the damage from the other side. This means I'm going to have to strategically fold so that most of that is hidden. Grids are awful and pre-creasing arguably more. So let's skip that and just go to the fun part. The first thing I'm going to take care of is the axis shift that we discussed during the design section. We can actually fold this sequentially by folding a pleat through the entire model, then folding the transitions, and then the structure that resolves the pleat. Now it's really important to do this first as the folding gets exponentially harder if you try to do it halfway through the collapse. But doing it this way is actually one of the most fun parts of this fold in addition to doing the color changes. Now speaking of color changes, this is so much fun because there's a combination of wacky transitions and some squashes that make it really pleasant to fold. You can see me doing a few unwraps, a little bit of an unsync. They're all pretty easy, but doing them is just a different kind of folding than regular collapse. So I enjoy it a lot. The other great thing about folding color changes is you can really see yourself making progress, just like you can see here. And yeah, like I mentioned, these two parts are the most interesting and most fun parts of actually folding the model. The rest, uh, not so interesting. So here it all is really quickly. Folding is done and now it's time to shape. I'm primarily going to shape based on the reference from Starfield that we saw at the beginning. There is only a little bit left of dry shaping to complete. This includes the weapon and the booster pack. The goal in shaping the weapon is to really replicate the silhouette of our reference and in shaping the booster pack, I'm just trying to make it angular and three-dimensional. After that, there's just hours and hours of wet shaping to do. Now, if you don't know what wet shaping is, it is basically taking methyl cellulose, which is the same material we use to treat the paper in order to shape our paper and freeze it into place. It's not the same as using glue, which just sticks the paper together. It's a sizing agent, and that's something you can Google online. But yeah, it's more like wet folding, so we're getting the paper wet, and when it dries, if we position it in the correct position, it'll dry and hold in that specific shape. If you want to learn more about methocellulose and where to get it, you can check out my ultimate paper guide where I talk about how to treat paper in a great amount of detail. Now, methocellulose is really great for shaping, but it has one caveat. You gotta let it dry. So most of those hours just kind of look like this. But trust me, those long hours were worth it.
And I hope you all enjoyed watching me design and fold from Starfield. Now it's not exactly like the game, but overall I'm really happy with how three dimensional the model is. And I think the color changes are pretty cool as well. I hope you also learned a lot from watching how I design because even I learned some new things while designing this myself. And that wraps up this video. Let me know down in the comments what you think about this design and if you learned anything. Also, my YouTube members got a pretty extensive behind the scenes look at when I was designing this origami. So if that's something that interests you, go ahead and join the YouTube membership and you get some exclusive behind the scenes access as I'm working on these videos. But other than that, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video. All this origami, all this origami, all this origami got me going kamikaze.